Yo, what's up guys? My name is Mr. Freeze2244 and welcome to the Elusive Target Arcade. This will be the very first video to cover on this particular uh, game mode. This is a new game mode that's coming to Hitman 3 from the Year 2 content. I'm going to be focusing on the ellipsis specifically in this video. I'm going to go for the default, uh, all the default loadout stuff, the default equipment, because you don't need any other special equipment for it. They're easy enough to get through without any equipment. Um, so that's what I'm going to go for. So basically how this works, you'll have three elusive targets back to back and it'll be working in an escalation type manner which the uh, you'll get a complication and it'll progressively get more difficult as the levels move on. It's not random, it is going to be consistent or complication. So for level one we have the collector elusive target and the specific complication for this one is you have to make sure you hide all bodies dead or uh, unconscious. So whether they're dead or unconscious, we have to make sure the bodies are hidden. That includes accidents and poison kills. So, uh, unfortunately, we have to rule those out, unless we are going to hide the bodies after. We're going to start in the default location, which is the main road. We're going to bring along the default pistol and the fireball wire and coin. These are the only things we are going to use throughout all three levels as well. Of course, there's going to be all silent assassin throughout all three levels. So our first objective is to basically just get into the house. We are going for the optional objective of retrieving the painting as well. You don't have to do that. It's not going to spoil your arcade mode or anything like that. But just be warned, if you do fail any one of those three levels, you will be locked out of this game mode for 12 hours. So just keep that in mind. So any, if you fail in any of the three levels, you will or die or anything like that, you will be locked out of the game mode for 12 hours. That is the... Uh, the downside to this thing but it does keep the integrity of the elusive target itself but we are going for the optional objective of getting the painting purely because it doesn't add any difficulty really and it kills some time anyway so it doesn't really matter first things first we're going to come in here and grab this feather duster enter this bathroom and throw the feather duster on the floor to attract the uh, housekeeper outside we're going to press our body against the wall like this he's going to come inside and we're going to subdue him from around the corner so as soon as the subdue prompt appears just go ahead and click subdue, tap it, and then there we go, knock him out, hide his body in the uh, closet. You have to make sure all bodies are hidden throughout this, and then retrieve his disguise. Once we've got this mm, pretty powerful disguise, we're going to head upstairs now. There's a couple of resources up here, there's a housekeeper, and we have the main target herself. She will be coming uh, from the main mission, she's going to come out and potentially spot you. So what we're going to do is just hide out here in the corridor, because we don't want her to detect us. So we're just going to chill out here in the corridor for a bit. Wait for her to go past. She's going to go in the room opposite. So it gives us plenty of time to enter the room. Once we do enter the room, we are going to go and get a letter opener from a table. So that's what we're going to go and get. It is an illegal item to carry in this disguise. Just be warned. So as soon as you grab it, go and put it away. There we go. Just put it away immediately. And now we're going to head up the stairs that are in that room. And then we're going to cut the painting down. That's going to complete one of the optional objectives. Okay, done. So all we've got left now is to take out the target himself. We're pretty free to go downstairs. Just be careful of that housekeeper that's on that corridor before you jump the gun. Although the uh, detection meter is quite slow when you're in this disguise. I've noticed. Unless you're being spotted by a guard. But yeah, just make sure you're avoiding all these enforcers on the way downstairs. Follow the path I'm going. Cody Haynes will be hanging around the, the greenhouse area. So that's where we're about to head to. We do need to make another disguise change to make this a little bit more easier for us. We're not going to take the corridor in front of us because there's going to be a housekeeper there. She is an enforcer, so you best to just avoid her altogether and head straight outside through this room. So there's the greenhouse in the background. Cody Haynes has just exited the greenhouse just there. I don't know whether you can see it in the distance, but we are going to take him out in a couple of minutes or so. So first things first, pull out your feather duster and throw it just next to this crate right here. We're going to grab this security guy's disguise, so he's going to investigate the noise. And we're going to go and knock him out, hide him in the crate, that's conveniently placed for us. And that allows us to grab his disguise and also his firearm that he drops on the floor. So we're going to go and knock him out and then dump him in the crate. Go ahead and grab his disguise. And then retrieve his weapon that he dropped on the floor as well. Next is we're going to have to head into the greenhouse itself. It is going to be unlocked. 
There's only going to be one enforcer around in that area, and he's going to be fiddling about on his phone. Don't know what he's doing on there, but he is going to be occupied with that. So he's basically there just to guard the boat key. That's just on the table in front of us. So we're not going to take that boat key. No point taking the risk. But this is the elusive target. And we're just going to hang around him. And the reason for that is because we want to make sure that he triggers a conversation with his guard. Because once he does that and you create a distraction, uh, Cody is going to go to the house. And that is when we're going to cause a distraction for him. We're not going to do anything in here because there's too many people in here. And there's only one crate available. Uh, which causes a little bit of a, a hassle in that regard. Because we have to make sure we hide all bodies. So we're going to open this door as they're trying to exit. Cody should turn around and talk to his guard. And as soon as he engages in the conversation, you can go ahead and open the door and place the weapon on the floor. You do that by using the shoulder buttons on your controller and placing the button with the triangle or the Y button. The guard should go and see the gun. Cody Haynes should turn around and head towards the house itself. And that is when you want to run off, go back to where the crate is and wait for Cody to come near you. And once he does, we're going to throw this feather duster on the floor to create a distraction so he comes over to investigate and that is when we're going to take him out so just be a little bit a little bit patient here there we go so if he's done this correctly you'll see a question mark above cody's head he's going to come over to investigate and we're actually going to throw this feather duster at his head To minimize the amount of opportunity for anyone to spot us and we're going to snap his neck stick him in the crate and jobs are good pick up anything he drops on the floor if you like and we're now head to the exit we're going to head over here we don't have the boat keep because again like i said that guard was basically gatekeeping that key so what we're going to do is just head over here there's no enforcers around this area anyway and it's quite a nice, safe, easy exit. This is an easy silent assassin for level 1. And then once we're wrapped up here, we're going to move on to level 2, which is the liability elusive target. Again, this is going to be the easiest out of all of them. So if you're coming this far so far, you've gotten the, uh, the second to easiest one out of the way. Coming up is going to be the easiest out of the three levels. So let's just get a confirmation of that silent assassin before we can move on. There we go. Unfortunately, we don't get any points for this. You only get points after completing all three of them, uh, which is a bit of a strange decision. But for the liability, our added complication is make sure that we don't take anybody out with a firearm. That is basically it. We're going to use the default location and using a coin. That is all we're going to need. We don't need anything else. And from the very start, we can either go through the Frisk Zone if you haven't got this shortcut unlocked over here. But if you do have the shortcut unlocked, head through this door. But like I said, if you don't, just go through that frisk zone, past that bodyguard, and you'll end up in the same area anyway. So don't worry about it. Next thing, we're going to go and find Terence Chesterfield. He's the liability. So we need to create a distraction for him. We are also not allowed to eliminate his guide. And we're not allowed to eliminate anyone with a pistol. Also, we have to make sure all bodies are hidden. That is another thing that we have to do. So like I said, the previous hide all bodies complication was added to this one. So to identify him, he's going to be wearing that fluorescent jacket over there. And what we're going to do is wait for him to basically attempt to sit down, come to this position here. Here he is in front of us. And what we're going to do is just throw the coin just at this wall or, or just below it to grab his attention. Go ahead and turn around and place the coin right on the ledge there. He's going to come over to investigate that noise. And what we're going to do is kick him off. However, he's going to be followed by a guard and his guide so what we're going to need to do is delay them and the way to do that is basically bumping into both of them and then shortly dropping a coin relatively close to them so we're just bumping into both of them to delay them as long as possible then dropping both coins right in front of them using the d-pad and then once we go over to this guy over here we're going to boot him off and that's going to be an instantly uh, body hidden into the water and all we've got to do now is just head to an exit it's just as easy as that we don't have to knock anyone else out we don't have to take anybody else out. We don't have to hide anyone else's body. We're just going to head straight to an exit. And we're going to avoid taking that uh, scooter exit because we are going to have to knock out that delivery boy. And then we're going to have to hide his body. So I just don't think that was worth it. Plus there's cameras there as well. So I'm just going to go for the safe option and head back the way we came. 
Again, if you don't have the shortcut unlocked, just head right instead of going forward through, through here. It doesn't really matter, you're just saving a little bit of time, that's all. I'm going to head to the exit over here, it's just a, a bicycle over here and just head straight to the exit. It's just really simple, really, really is. The uh, liability is a bit of a joke of an elusive target overall, really. He never was any good or very interesting when it first came out and it certainly still isn't interesting now. But uh, lucky for us, he's a part of this uh, arcade, so we can get him done. I don't think these elusive targets, by the way, count towards the individual rewards for them. So if you're beating this guy for the first time, I don't think it counts towards um, completing it. I don't, I'm not completely sure on that though. But uh, do let me know in the comments if it does. I've, I've had word though that it doesn't. So, you know, there's a silent assassin for liability. Level three, we have the uh, the Ascensionist who's taking place in Dubai. The added complication for this one is you're not allowed to get spotted by cameras and you've got two minutes if you do to take the cameras out. So we're going to start in the default location. However, we're not going to bring a pistol because we have to get through the Frisker zone. So the only thing we're going to bring is a fiber wire and uh, the coin, of course. So because of the complication of hiding all bodies, we can't go for any accident kills or poison kills, unfortunately, because the body is going to be found in open space. So the only thing we can do is have to bide hard time for this one, unfortunately. Uh, it's a bit of a ball breaker when it comes to this. So we're going to grab all the coins from this little counter over here. The more coins, the merrier. The target is here. You can see her right there in the, the pink pants or trousers if you are from the UK. And then what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to climb up this vine right here. Because what we're going to do need to do now is grab ourselves, grab ourselves a nice little fresh disguise. With a nice little hat. We're going to grab one of these guys disguised, but we're going to wait right now. See this guy on the left? He's going to be patrolling left and right. And if we don't do this at the right time, he's going to spot the body. So the time to create a distraction is when he makes his return trip back over to where that guard is. So we'll do that in a moment. But there's the guy, there's the target walking away with her confidant or wherever he is. But yeah, this guard's coming back now. And this is about the time you want to throw the coin in the corner. And like I said, the reason why we're timing it like this is because the guard on the right is going to come to investigate the noise and it gives us enough time to choke him out and then dump him in the closet before that other guard sees the body. He's also going to drop a suppressed pistol on the floor as well. You want to grab that. Grab his security guard disguise, grab the pistol. And now we're going to head through the security room. We're going to head it to this side of the room as well. And aim at those evidence over here. What the, you can highlight it with your instinct. Shoot it to take it out. That removes all the cameras, so you don't have to worry about that kind of complication. I'm going to pass through this door now, or the staircase. Over the other side is going to be a crowbar. Go ahead and grab that. Jump over the scaffolding and come up to this next area. This is going to be a trespassing zone in this disguise, so just be warned. But we are going to have to take out this guard anyway. Knock him out. Grab the crowbar, grab the gun, grab the uh, the dude. Now we're going to drag him into this toilet. See that guard going into the security room? We're going to take him out a little bit later on. For now, we're just going to dump this guard in the locker, grab his disguise. Now we're in the perfect disguise for this uh, level. We're going to select the crowbar, because this is what we're going to use to knock out the guard in that security room. So we're going to rush over there right now. Here he is. Get behind him. Whack him over the head. Dump his body in the locker. The reason why we're doing this is because we're just removing the chance of him discovering a body a little bit later on. Pick up that gun. Pick up the uh, the VIP cards that they were on the table there on the floor. Next, there's going to be a maintenance guy in here. Knock him out. And we are going to drag him all the way over to that bathroom. Also going to grab this hammer as well. This is better. Better melee than the crowbar. We're going to drag him to the bathroom whether we dump the guard before. We're doing this it's because we've got a little bit of time to kill uh, between when the target comes up the stairs. And we may as well dump him in here because we need the two locker spaces in that room where we knock this guy out uh, to a little bit later on. 
Next thing we're going to do is create a breadcrumb trail. And the way to do that is basically using the shoulder buttons on your controller and placing the coin with the Y button or the triangle button if you're on, on PlayStation. And as you're placing about four or five coins there on the floor, the target is going to be going, oh, coin. And then she picks it up and then she goes to the next coin and she goes, oh, coin. And so on and so on. The whole point of that is so we can get her far enough down the corridor so we can knock her out. That is That is the only reason why we did it. So the target is currently there. You'll see the blip just above her head. She is told, uh, confidant, whoever that guy is, to go upstairs. And we are just going to patiently wait for her to come all the way up. It's going to take a while, so I may as well just speed this up to the point where she actually gets in the position where we need to be. Ultimately, we're going to go back up the staircase and wait around the corner for her to get up the stairs. Just be careful of the, uh, the maintenance woman on the staircase. So at the top of the staircase, we just hit behind the corner like this, and the target, as she comes up the stairs, she spots the coin, picks it up, and she'll carry on following the breadcrumb trail. Once we've got a bit of space and she's gone past us, we can get behind the, the guy, knock him out, and then knock out the target. Excellent. We have to do it in that order. Awesome. So go ahead and knock him out, then knock her out. Once you've done that, you can grab all the stuff that's dropped on the floor. If you don't like a mess, I don't like mess. I don't like leaving things around. We're going to drag her now into this room here, in the storage room. And before you put her in the locker, go ahead and snap her neck and stick her in the locker. Target eliminated. Then all we've got to do is uh, do the same with the other guy, but just don't kill him. Just make sure we just uh, drag his unconscious body and put it in the locker. And that will complete the uh, added complication be careful of those two guys over there. I'm not sure if they do spot. I can spot this from over here. I doubt it, but just in case, just be wary of that. Right, and if you have never opened the elevator, these won't, doors won't be locked. Well, these doors won't be unlocked, I should say. So if those elevator doors are locked, you aren't going to be able to access those exits, including this one. But if you do have them unlocked, go feel free to take the elevator. But if you don't, just follow where I'm going. Just opposite the window of the security room back down the vine, we're just going to slide all the way back down the vine and basically exit where we started the mission which is these elevators over here but yeah, if you don't have the elevator doors unlocked you're going to want to take this exit right here and there we go this will basically wrap up the elusive target arcade called the ellipsis and this was done with all the default loadouts uh, with the default start locations as well the ellipsis is overall is relatively easy like i said it uh, unfortunately is turned out how i expected it to be this is a basically an elusive target escalation and it's nothing more and i don't see really what what's so special about it except for this reward we do get the krugermeyer 22 dark version of the weapon so this is what it looks like in game as well pretty cool so if you are going for a krugermeyer you want to grab this one if you like it but that's going to do it for this video so thank you very much for watching Feel free to drop a like on this video if it helped you out. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below, clicking the link in the description. Let me know your thoughts, what you thought of this Elusive Target Arcade. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's meh? Do you think it's great? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm interested to find out what you guys think. Uh, yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. I'll be sure to do another video tomorrow on the next one. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Cheers.